I now place my feet upon the earth. With great happiness, I walk upon the sacred earth, our mother. May the generations to come also walk in this sacred manner. I was born upon the prairie where the wind blew free and there was nothing to break the light of the sun. I was born where there were no enclosures and where everything drew a free breath. I've hunted and lived over that country. I lived like my fathers before me and like them, I lived happily. When I was a youth, the country was very beautiful. Along the rivers were belts of timberland, where grew cottonwood, maple, elm, ash, hickory, and walnut trees, and many other shrubs. And under these grew many good herbs and beautiful flowering plants. In both the woodland and the prairies, I could see the trails of many kinds of animals and could hear the cheerful songs of many kinds of birds. When I walked abroad, I could see many forms of life. Beautiful living creatures which Wakanda had placed here. And these were, after their manner, walking, flying, leaping, running, playing all about. Brother, listen to what we say. There was a time when our forefathers owned this great island. Their seat extended from the rising to the setting sun. The great spirit had made it for the use of the Indians. It created the buffalo, the deer, and other animals for food. It made the bear and beaver. Their skins served us for clothing. He'd scattered them all over the country and taught us how to take them. Everything the power of the world does is done in a circle. The sky is round, and I've heard that the earth is round like a ball. So are all the stars. The wind, in its greatest powers, whirls. 
Birds make their nests in circles, for theirs is the same religion as ours. The sun comes forth and goes down again in a circle. The moon does the same, and both are round. Even the seasons form a great circle in their changing. They always come back again to where they were. The life of a man is a circle from childhood to childhood, and so it is in everything where power moves. Our teepees were round like the nests of birds, and these were always set in a circle, the nation's hoop, a nest of many nests, where the great spirit meant for us to hatch our children. We should understand well that all things are the works of the great spirit. We should know that he is within all things, the trees, the grasses, the rivers, the mountains, and all the four-legged animals, and the winged peoples, and even more important, we should understand that he is also above all these things and peoples. Did you know that trees talk? Well, they do. They talk to each other, and they'll talk to you if you listen. Trouble is, white people don't listen. When a woman cuts the roots of a young cedar tree, she prays, Look at me, friend. I come to ask for your dress, for you have come to take pity on us. For there is nothing for which you cannot be used, and you are really willing to give us your dress. I come to beg you for this long life maker, for I am going to make a basket for lily roots out of you. I pray, friend, not to feel angry with me on account of what I'm going to do to you. When we Indians kill meat, we eat it all up. When we dig roots, we make little holes. We shake down acorns and pine nuts. We don't chop down the trees. We only use dead wood. But the white people plow up the ground, pull down the trees, kill everything. The tree says, don't. I am sore. Don't hurt me. But they chop it down and cut it up. Oh, you people who are always standing, who pierce up through the earth and who reach even to the heavens, you tree people are very many. You trees are the protectors of the wind, for upon you they build their lodges and raise their families. And beneath you there are many people whom you shelter. May all these people and all their generations walk together as relatives. It was good for the skin to touch the earth. And the old people liked to remove their moccasins and walk with bare feet on the sacred earth. The soil was soothing, strengthening, cleansing, and healing. 
the old Lakota was wise. He knew that man's heart away from nature becomes hard. He knew that lack of respect for growing living things soon led to lack of respect for humans too. So he kept his youth close to its softening influence. Guard your tongue in youth, said the old chief. And in age, you may mature a thought that will be of service to your people. Training began with children who were taught to sit still and enjoy it. They were taught to use their organs of smell, to look when there was apparently nothing to see and to listen intently when all seemingly was quiet. My father went on talking to me in a low voice. That is how our people always talk to their children. So low and quiet, the child thinks he is dreaming, but he never forgets. When I was 10 years of age, I looked at the land and the rivers, the sky above, the animals around me, and could not fail to realize that they were made by some great power. I was so anxious to understand this power that I questioned the trees and the bushes. It seemed as though the flowers were staring at me. And I wanted to ask them, who made you? I looked at the moss-covered stones. Some of them seemed to have the features of a man, but they could not answer me. Then I dreamed a dream. I dreamed that I was in the mountains and fell asleep in the shade of a tree. Something shook my blanket. It was a buffalo who said, rise and follow me. I obeyed. He took a path and I followed. The path was above the ground. We did not touch the earth. When a man shuts his eyes, he sees a great deal. He then enters his own mind and things become clear to him. But objects passing before his eyes would distract him. For that reason, a dreamer makes known his request through what he sees when his eyes are closed. It has long been his intention to make his request to Wankan Tonka, and he resolves to seek seclusion on the top of a butte or other high place. When at last he goes there, he closes his eyes, and his mind is upon Wankantanka and his work. The man who does this usually has in mind some animal which he would like for protection and help. No man can succeed in life alone, and he cannot get the help he wants from men. Therefore, he seeks help through some bird or animal which... Wankantanka sends for his assistance. Everything as it moves now and then, here and there, makes stops. The bird as it flies stops in one place to make its nest and in another to rest in its flight. A man, when he goes forth, stops when he wills. So the god has stopped. The sun is one place where he has stopped. The trees, the animals are all where he has stopped. And the Indian thinks of these places and sends his prayers there to reach the place where the god has stopped to win help and a blessing. I have noticed in my life that all men have a liking for some special animal, tree, plant, or spot of earth. 
If men would pay more attention to these preferences and seek what is best to do in order to make themselves worthy of that toward which they are so attracted, they might have dreams which would purify their lives. Let a man decide upon his favorite animal and make a study of it, learning its innocent ways. Let him learn to understand its sounds and motions. The animals want to communicate with man, but Wankantanka does not intend they shall do so directly. Man must do the greater part in securing an understanding. The bear is the only animal which is dreamed of as offering to give herbs for the healing of man. The bear is not afraid of either animals or men, and it is considered ill-tempered. And yet it is the only animal which has shown us this kindness. Therefore the medicines received from bear are said to be especially effective. My paw is sacred. Herbs are plentiful. My paw is sacred. All things are sacred. Indians and animals know better how to live than white men. Nobody can be in good health if he does not have all the time fresh air, sunshine, and good water. The teepee is much better to live in, always clean, warm in winter, cool in summer, easy to move. If the great spirit wanted men to stay in one place, he would have made the world stand still. He made it to always change so birds and animals can move and always have green grass and ripe berries, sunlight to work and play and night to sleep, summer for flowers to bloom and winter for them to sleep, always changing. Part of a man's life is between the ages of 18 and 33. Then he is at his best. He has the strength and ability to accomplish his aims. He is brave to defend himself and others and is free to do much good. He is kind to all, especially to the poor and needy. The tribe looks to him as a defender and he is expected to shield the women. His physical strength is at its best. He is light on his feet and can reduce long distances to short ones. He is taught true politeness and is very gallant. What animal has these traits more than any other? It is the elk, which is the emblem of beauty, gallantry, and protection. The elk lives in the forest and is in harmony with all his beautiful surroundings. He goes easily through the thickets, 
in spite of his broad, branching horns. We love quiet. We suffer the mouse to play. When the woods are rustled by the wind, we are not afraid. You will be as Mother Earth, humble and fruitful. May your steps and those of your children be firm and sacred. As Wankantanka has been merciful to you, so you too must be merciful to others, especially to those children who are without parents. If such a child should ever come to your lodge, and if you should have but one piece of meat which you have already placed in your mouth, you should take it out and give it to her. You should be as generous as this. My young men shall never work. Men who work cannot dream, and wisdom comes to us in dreams. You ask me to plow the ground. Shall I take a knife and tear my mother's breast? Then when I die, she will not take me to her bosom to rest. You ask me to dig for stone. Shall I dig under her skin for her bones? Then when I die, I cannot enter her body to be born again. You ask me to cut grass and make hay, to sell it, and be rich like white men. But how can I cut off my mother's hair? We do not think of the great open plains, the beautiful rolling hills, and winding streams with tangled growth as wild. Only to the white man was nature a wilderness, and only to him was the land infested with wild animals and savage people. To us it was tame. Earth was bountiful, and we were surrounded with the blessings of the great mysterious. Not until the hairy man from the east came and with brutal frenzy heaped injustices upon us and the families we loved was it wild for us.
when the very animals of the forest began fleeing from his approach, then it was that for us the Wild West began. Our land is more valuable than your money. It will last forever. It will not even perish by the flames of fire. As long as the sun shines and the waters flow, this land will be here to give life to men and animals. We cannot sell the lives of men and animals. Therefore, we cannot sell this land. It was put here for us by the Great Spirit, and we cannot sell it because it does not belong to us. You can count your money and burn it within the nod of a buffalo's head, but only the Great Spirit can count the grains of sand and the blades of grass of these plains. us, the ashes of our ancestors are sacred, and their resting place is hallowed ground. You wander far from the graves of your ancestors, and seemingly without regret. Your religion was written on tables of stone by the iron finger of your god, so that you could not forget. The red man could never comprehend or remember it. Our religion is the traditions of our ancestors. The dreams of our old men, given them in the solemn hours of night by the Great Spirit. And the visions of the sachems. And is written in the hearts of our people. Your dead cease to love you in the land of their nativity as soon as they pass the portals of the tomb and wander away beyond the stars. They are soon forgotten and never return. Our dead never forget the beautiful world that gave them being. <laughs> 